uh, what a customer really want that needs to be well uh, understood by the stakeholders and uh, you need to have some specific expertise uh, for some uh, department like uh, the design team developer team testing team purchase team sourcing team costing marketing after sales technology department all you need to have some specific expertise in each and every discipline and uh, you need to form a team and it is not mandatory that you need to have expertise also and even you can take some uh, people uh, who is uh, very new or with having very few years of experience as well uh, less than five years also because um, they are good in uh, talking a lot of uh, data and a lot of uh, inputs they will also give because information phase is a very important phase for which uh, they, they will be very much helpful and uh, even they will also be very much helpful during the development phase uh, uh, they may uh, find it difficult during uh, creativity phase and evaluation phase but uh, still uh, uh, the people uh, uh, who are having a few years experience are also good in creativity because uh, they, they will think very fastly uh, even you can use them uh, you can also form a team uh, with the help of them as well because uh, what the research says that is that they are good in information collecting the information they are good in doing the execution point of view which means development activities and uh, they are also good in uh, creativity uh, because evaluation uh, needs to be done with a lot of expertise but creativity can be uh, the ideas can be generated uh, uh, with the help of uh, uh, even even the, the process or uh, less experienced people as well uh, you, should, you, should, you should always uh, respect the peers that is what it is mentioned the last point uh, irrespective of their experience or uh, uh, the, the knowledge what they have uh, you should always respect uh, seniors and also juniors the juniors should respect seniors and seniors should respect juniors so it's like basically you should work as a, as a team um, and you should always learn from both way uh, because learning is never in in never ending process uh, Okay, so you should always acknowledge the need for improvement and you should always have uh, a positive or enthusiastic attitudes and uh, you should always be inquisitive and open to new ideas. You should always think out of box uh, and you should always recognize the better way to get it done and you should also promote and accept ideas of others and the last uh, is you need to respect the peers and also management. What the management want that also you need to consider. Sometimes uh, the voice of customer, uh, if you take and if the, if the management is uh, is, de is denying that, then uh, then you will be in a confused as whether whether you need to go with the customer voice or the management voice. Okay, in that case you should be very much open and you have to tell this is what the customer wants to the top management. Uh, you have to convince the top management as well, and you can convince only by giving some data. Okay. Uh, and uh, even the top management will think that the customer is the uh, customer is the king, and that they want uh, they will also understand uh, uh, to give preference to customer rather than top management. So you have to be open actually, you not hide the things. Uh, this is how the, the guideline will work. Right? Even if you are good in all the things, and if you are if you are uh, if you are good in all the points from uh, first to class but one but if you're not good in uh, explaining to the top management or if you're not open to all the activities what you're doing top management then uh, then again it is of no use so again you need to take the support from the management then you have to take it further here sir voc means value of customer or uh, voice of customer voice of customer oh. Okay, so yesterday we, we are telling about the reason for poor value. Uh, so just a glimpse, like, I think we have covered everything, but anyway, in case anything we missed, missed out, uh, just uh, uh, you can have a uh, reversal. So the reason for poor value is lack of time and lack of understanding what the customer really needs, lack of information or idea. Okay, if I, 
Yeah. That's how you need to. This is the first stepping stone for any any success. You need to have uh, information what you are going to do. And uh, if you have the misconception and if you have uh, the, the bad habits of uh, uh, doing uh, wrong data, giving wrong data, then it will it will end up with the poor value. Um, even I can, even there are in the, even in companies, uh, some people will do purposely they will do wrong data, uh, and they will give different different data to different team. They will confuse the people, uh, and finally they will tell, uh, "I have never given the data. I don't know <laughs> where this data has come." So they will try to confuse and uh, uh, they try to mislead the uh, project. So that may lead to poor value. Okay? So it will be very much. We should analyze what whether the, whether the data is reliable data. Uh, it is not. Uh, and again, uh, the deviations uh, due to temporary successes like deviation, if you want, uh, and that again that becomes uh, permanent. It's also the reason for a poor value. Lack of funds. If if, you, if your company is not having funds for carrying out value engineering, uh, then it may lead to uh, a poor value uh, and poor attitudes and reluctance to take care. But you also you need to take advice from your top management or seniors, uh, and the seniors also should come uh, and ask uh, the opinion of the juniors because they are in the execution part. Um, and they should also the top management of the seniors also should understand that the difficulty that is been faced by the execution executive people like uh, who are who are who are in who are in work. So they need to understand both way. The communication should be both, um, and they should seek the advice. Basically, juniors should take the advice of the senior, and seniors should also understand the, the practical difficulty, uh, and they should resolve the bottlenecks so that uh, the Junior people can execute uh, value engineering or uh, uh, value projects. And this is what I told yesterday: the change in technology or specification. What does what the technology you have today may become obsolete after two year or three year. Uh, most of the mobile phone applications like may be good. Even the, the cost will be good. Even the specification will be good. Technology will be good. Uh, after the, after the, oh, a year or a two, then it becomes obsolete. That's what happened with uh, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, and uh, now, now 5G is also going to come. Uh, this change in technology uh, will also become make sure that uh, the product what you are going to manufacture will also get upgraded. If it is not getting upgraded, uh, then it becomes obsolete. Like uh, the ambassador car, what he told uh, once upon a time, it was very. It is the first company in India to, to have the Satisfy the customer, but uh, in due course of time, after the entry of Maruti, uh, you know, no, nowhere uh, you can find very rarely company means uh, the ambassador car, but still there are ambassador car, but uh, you see, it becomes obsolete, even the company is closed. So, this is how the, the change in technology has you, you may be good, you may be number one at this point of time, you may not be sure what will happen. Uh, that's what happened to. Even uh, even the Geo when it came to picture uh, before, before Geo only Airtel was playing a key role. Airtel, Vodafone, uh, BSNL. Uh, and nowadays even even BSNL is run by the government. People are not going for BSNL. It's very rarely they're going. But uh, after the entry of Geo, even the Airtel they reduced the price. And uh, you see now the roaming. In those days, what happened? Uh, maybe if I remember correctly, maybe seven years or five years back. Uh, there is always a roaming charge. Suppose if you are from Maharashtra and if you are, uh, if you are calling a, a person from Jharkhand, then what happened is that uh, you need to, uh, there will be some roaming charge and you need to put some booster pack for that. Uh, you see now, uh, there is again, there are a lot of advancement has happened. And again, even the network, what you can see, those days, uh, maybe 10 years back, the network might have been good, and now it is uh, better. So, I mean, we, uh, in in future, maybe in another five years and ten years, there will be a lot of improvement in technology, and uh, the company who is manufacturing the product, it may be related to automobile or maybe the, the chemical or any uh, any consumer goods or FMCG, they should need to upgrade. Okay, 
is you need to upgrade the technologies or uh, the products uh, and then accordingly they need to fight for winning the market and you should always uh, even i think you have the technology team in uh, in your you know jammy call you should understand what what can uh, what technology you need to upgrade so you can always focus on the future also future projects along with uh, the, the value engineering value metrology into this it's not that uh, value metrology is you need to have a separate department but uh, it's good to have separate department but uh, each and every team members or different departments should uh, uh, should have uh, the value metrology in their mind and uh, they should approach any any projects or any any activities considering the value metrology or value improvement that will bring uh, even a small increment change uh, any small idea can bring a big change and a big cost saving or a value improvement uh, even if the cost is not getting reduced and if you're improving some of the uh, features or performance and uh, you are giving to the customer with the uh, same price the customer, customer gets satisfied so you, you need to know how to play uh, play and you need to satisfy the customer basically it's, it's, a, it's a play game but uh, you need to play in a more uh, reliable manner otherwise if, if you are not reliable then you may lose the customer and uh, it's not only you are going to lose the customer they will try to uh, damage the brand image of the company as well uh, and again uh, that may give the, the poor rating of the customer may may, may make uh, the other customer not to come to you so you have the indirect uh, problem with respect to uh, getting the new customer as well okay so and again the last uh, is uh, doing uh, the internal politics that, that may lead to poor value so it's, it's like uh, considering this yeah. guys hello Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, for any fast technique or VM technique, what is the proper team size and how long should a VM or fast technique analysis take? Uh, sir, just to hold, just, just hold for a minute. Uh, just hold, hold for a second. Yes, I'm getting too much. Uh, your voice is too high. One second, I'll just reduce the volume. Can you repeat now? Yes, sir. Uh, for any fast techniques or VM techniques, okay. what proper team size and how long should a VM or fast techniques analysis take? Um, sir, actually, I'm very sorry because I'm getting some your voice is very. Can can you can you put it in chat box? Just just um, I need to. Just set my volume setting. Just, just. Oh, okay. Can you put it in? Can you put it in uh, that box? Meanwhile, I'll try to, I to try to resolve it. Uh, sure, sir. Sure. You put, you put your question in chat box. Then again, I will try to uh, just give me one, 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 one minute or two minutes. I'll try to see it. Okay. So can you ask now? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Ah, now you can ask, sir. Now, now, now you can ask the question, yeah. Sir, my query is, okay. for any fast techniques or yes. technique, what is the proper team size? And okay. how long should a VM techniques or fast technique analysis take. Okay, so the guideline what I told is six to eight members uh, for a, for a for a project team. So there is no uh, like there is no rule because uh, uh, it again depends on uh, the complexity of the project. So you may have different uh, project in your company itself. Uh, basically, different each and every project will come under program management. So. Uh, program management deals with many projects may it may have five projects or ten projects so and what are the ten projects what you have as a program in your company 
uh, out of 10, uh, 5 may be uh, bit high, high value and high priority, 2 may be medium value and medium priority, and 3 may be low priority and uh, uh, low, 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 low level uh, projects. So, considering the complexity of the project and the importance of the, the, the criticality of the project, you can have your team members, but it is always good to have the team members uh, comprises of each each department with at least one person and uh, and i mean it is also good that particular person should uh, be uh, having knowledge uh, who, who can execute the value engineering project as well um, and it's also good to involve the expertise um, maybe once one one senior person and one junior person in a team even that is also good um, but uh, too many too many members in a team is also a problem um, when I say six to eight members uh, from each and uh, one from each department, uh, uh, you can also parallelly have uh, two from each department. One may be senior, another one may be junior. Uh, but uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the absence of senior, you can also use uh, some uh, juniors to attend the meeting or uh, for some for some of the discussion. Uh, that but uh, in front line, even the seniors can be there in the front line uh, because they know how to communicate uh, and uh, they can be the front line but the execution part the juniors can take place can take it so so to be frank you can uh, to, it is better to have two percent one one senior level and one junior level in each and every department but to be in, in the front line of communication you can have uh, only the expert or the seniors uh, uh, so that they can communicate and get the things work done uh, from the management and also from the customer and they can also guide uh, the juniors how to how to how to uh, carry out the work uh, this is how you, you can form a multi-region team in a company uh, and the, the second question what you ask is related to fast technique right functional analysis systematic technique right is that a fast technique meaning that or how what is the second question you asked uh, how long should analysis take? Any my fast techniques or VM technique? How, how long? How long should analysis take in any project? So how long you should analyze it? Okay, analyze the steps. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, see, uh, first, uh, as I said, you have different phases in value metrology. Like uh, you start with the pre workshop where you try to. Uh, Select the project because as I give an example, you may have 10 projects. Out of 10 projects, which project you are going to take? Uh, you, need to, you need to select the project first and you need to select the scope of the project. You need to select the vision, mission, what is the objective, what are the key deliverables. You need to select all these things. Then you need to go for a micro level information about what you have selected. Um, then you go with the function phase and you go with the, the step by step process so when you go step by step process uh, you will you, you you need to analyze the, all the critical information that is required so if you're going for information phase you need to get all the data and you need to analyze each and every step there is no timeline because if if, uh, if the project is long basically the bridge construction project or are, are, uh, the uh, yeah, national highway or uh, uh, sometimes uh, over with uh, some uh, the dam construction project um, this type of projects will take more time uh, and even you need to cut some of the forest uh, to construct a dam even you can take some some river linking project also so if the project is too too complex okay it may take many 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 months or many uh, years so maybe two years or three years sometimes so you, if the project duration is long, um, and uh, you need to analyze it each and every step. Like uh, it's not that uh, you need to you need to stop analyzing the things in information phase alone and in in uh, in, in, in function phase alone or in creativity phase alone. You need to analyze and you need to see the rel reliability of each and every uh, activities um, in each and every. Phases like uh, you have different phases. So in each and every phase, pre workshop phase, post workshop phase, and also in post workshop phase, you need, in each and every phases you need to 
analyze it. You should not stop analyzing it because uh, if you are stop analyzing it, you may not know the reliability of uh, uh, the information. If suppose, say for example, if you stop analyzing at creativity phase, you may not uh, uh, know the, the the reliability of ideas what you are going for what has been given, and sometimes you may neglect the ideas what some useful ideas you may neglect, and sometimes you may not get new ideas because uh, if you if you stop analyzing it, you may not encourage. Uh, uh, encourage the peers also. If you are not encouraging your peers, they may not uh, come up with new ideas. Uh, so you should never stop analyzing it. And uh, there is no duration for analyzing the anything. But again, all depends on the project size and uh, the duration. Uh, but but the thing you need to follow the step by step approach. First, you always start with pre workshop, workshop, and post workshop. And in workshop, we have the stages. Start with information phase, function phase, then creativity phase. You have to follow the steps.